This week, I'd like to recount a story from the early years of our congregation, a scene that's kind of fun, but which can teach us a lot about our congregation. Here's the story as it is recounted in Shan Gan's biography. They were constantly thinking of new ways to bring in an income. At Christmas in the year 1842, for instance, they made a very large crib, taking up one entire room in the house. This was the joint work of several friendly families. The girls dressed the shepherds and the wise men. The boys built palaces for Herod and Pilate. Crowds of people came to see, and the offerings were considerable. The seven to eight hundred francs thus brought in went to pay for the kitchen stove. This scene is not at all different from the type of things our friends and benefactors do today to help us raise funds. Boutiques, raffles, canned goods collections, church collections, and gala events. What we see in this scene from 1842, and in all of our contemporary fundraising efforts, is people taking initiative and employing ingenuity to help us make ends meet, all the while trusting in God's providence to provide for the needs of the poor. And just like in 1842, we often bring in just enough money to meet the need. I'm reminded here of a passage from our constitutions about our foundress. Nothing held her back. She was a docile instrument in the hand of God. For the success of her undertakings, she showed herself audacious in the use of human means, creative when necessary, and at the same time, absolutely confident in the providence of God. And another passage notes that Jean Jugan envisioned hospitality as a humble fraternal service which unites in one family the little sisters and the elderly, and associates with them lay collaborators who desire to share the sufferings of their brothers and sisters and provide generously for their needs. This leads me to the second detail in the 1842 story worth noting today. Even in those early years, the sisters knew how to involve other people in their efforts on behalf of the poor. Today we have advisory boards and fundraising committees, but even back in 1842, the sisters were happy to involve others in their mission. I can picture the young girls making shepherd costumes while the boys built the scenery and how much fun they would have had helping the sisters. I'm sure that the residents got involved too. For those more disabled, they probably watched with amusement and gave their advice just as the residents would do today. Welcoming others into our homes and inviting them to share in the joy of hospitality has always been an important part of our mission. It was very difficult during the pandemic to have to close our doors to visitors and volunteers. Not only was it hard to accomplish everything that had to be done without the help of our volunteers and lay associates, but it just didn't feel right. To share a little of my own vocation story, I began volunteering in one of our homes as a teenager. And as a volunteer, I got to do all kinds of things, from playing the piano for the residents, to feeding the infirm, doing crafts with them, and helping to decorate for Christmas. I can still remember a life-changing encounter I had with a resident during the first Christmas I volunteered at the home. I'd been sent to help the residents write out Christmas cards, and when I approached one of the women, she told me that she had no relatives left because they had all died, and so without any loved ones, she had no reason to celebrate Christmas. I was really stunned by this sad little woman's response, because to me, Christmas was always such a happy time. But in that moment, I realized that Christmas was not a happy time for everyone and that God was calling me to do something about it and maybe even to give my life so that lonely elderly people might know a bit of happiness. I was just a teenager, but in that moment, 
I found such a sense of purpose and a very deep joy in making the elderly happy. I've always wished for others, especially young people, the joy and sense of purpose that God led me to discover in helping others. We couldn't be happier that volunteers and friends are allowed back in our homes now that the pandemic has, for the most part, ended. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you if you are one of our volunteers, Jean Jugat Associates, or benefactors. Life just wasn't the same without you. We're so happy to have you back. <laughs>